Delta Airlines announced the retirement of their Boeing 777 fleet by the end of 2020. This is tough news to hear. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Some of my most cherished memories are on board this airplane. Let me share a little bit more about the news, along with some of my memories on board this airplane. Let's get into it. The 777 has been a workhorse for Delta, serving many of its long-haul routes since it entered the fleet in 1999. Unfortunately, on May 14, 2020, Delta's CEO, Ed Bastian, released an internal memo that quickly made its way into the hands of the public. In it, Bastian explained that the airline is burning through more than $50 million every day and that he and his colleagues are doing everything they can to slow that burn. Eliminating what he called older aircraft and modernizing the fleet will allow them to plan for the future. The airline's much older MD-88s and MD-90s are set to retire at the beginning of June. Retiring a fleet as iconic as the 777 is not an easy decision, he said. I know it has a direct impact on many of you who fly, crew, and service these jets. The 777 has played an important role with Delta since 1999, allowing us to open new long-haul markets and grow our international network as we transformed into a global airline. Ed Bastian no doubt recognizes the vital role the airplane has played in Delta's development. He was, after all, one of the executives who took delivery of Delta's first 777-200LR back in 2008. He went on to say, however, that the Airbus A330s and A350s are much more fuel-efficient and cost-effective and will, as a result, be the right airplanes to help reunite Delta passengers with what most acknowledge will be a very slow return to international travel. I asked over on Instagram what you thought of this news, and the responses were overwhelming in their consistency. At least I'm not alone in feeling sad about this situation. But what is the 777? What makes it, as Ed Bastian said, iconic? In this video, we'll explore that question and many others. But first, if you like travel and aviation, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can be among the first to know when I publish a new video. The Boeing 777 program was launched in 1990 with a first order from United Airlines. The first 777 entered service with them in June of 1995. I'll never forget spotting my very first 777 in Chicago, must have been about 1996 or so. I ran across the terminal, knocking over several business travelers in my pursuit of a photo, but I got it. I like to think my skills as a photographer have improved a little bit in the intervening years, but you be the judge over on Instagram. Turns out I also earned my wings as a 727 pilot on this trip. This was the first airplane to be completely designed by computer, and because of the reliability and efficiency of its twin-engine design, it would deliver a serious blow to four-engine long-haul aircraft like the 747 and A340, accelerating their decline due to more fuel requirements. Delta's 777 fleet consists of 18 airplanes. Eight are ER variants, extended range, and 10 are LR variants, long range. The ERs have a range of 7,065 nautical miles, while the LRs can travel a whopping 8,555 nautical miles. Prior to the current crisis, Delta 777s could be found spanning the globe. On any given day, you'd find them in airports on five continents. Some of my own most cherished aviation memories were forged aboard Delta's 18 Boeing 777s. Cheers. Nearly anyone who's flown on or been near a 777 will have fond memories of the sound of its engines spooling up. I also had the opportunity to fly with Delta on what is, perhaps, its most iconic route, Atlanta to Johannesburg. The flight was certainly memorable. It was, at the time, one of the ten longest commercial flights on Earth. It was also when I noticed just how much these airplanes were showing their age. Hinges were loose, fabric was torn, stained. It was time for these planes to get refurbished. And that brings us to what is, perhaps, the most surprising aspect of this news from Delta. Barely three months ago, the airline completed a refurbishment of the cabins on these aircraft, a project that cost upwards of $100 million. Proof positive that nothing is off the table as the airline attempts to ensure its survival. 
By pure luck, we were flying back to LAX from Sydney in 2018 and just happened to be on the very first refurbished 777 to fly out of Australia. I can't believe our good fortune. This aircraft behind me, November 706 Delta November, has been recently retrofitted with the new Delta One suite. So this is the very first time this configuration with the Delta One suite to the 7, uh, 777 rather, uh, has come to Sydney. This cabin redesign was first introduced in Delta's A350. It brought the first doors to a U.S. carrier in business class and was quite spacious. It suited the 777 incredibly well. And having the good fortune to be among the first passengers to ever experience this seat on this route was an unexpected privilege. This flight really ranks among my top favorite aviation memories. I was impressed, to say the least. Thing is incredible. I'm so excited to be on uh, one of the very first 777s, just purely by chance. I had no idea this aircraft was on this route. Only a handful of them have been retrofitted, so this is super exciting. This announcement from Delta leaves us with many unanswered questions. Questions I'd love to see you answer in the comments section below. Yeah, the A330s and A350s can replace much of what the 777s did, but will they effectively replace everything? Will all the routes once served by the 777 for Delta come back? Will the airline return to India, South Africa, and Australia? These aren't very old airframes, so where are they going to go next? Will they be converted to freighters? What other aircraft types are at risk at Delta? But perhaps the biggest question of all, what does the future hold for Delta Airlines and the aviation industry in general? Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.